Scary Recaps presents Underwater Beware of Spoilers Down beneath the ocean, in the deepest parts of our planet, a research facility by the name Kepler-8222, property of Tian Industries, runs its drilling business day after day, calm and unperturbed. Everything is in order. The scientists spend their days in relative peace, until a strong earthquake suddenly hits and destroys a major part of the facility. Fear spreads as the water rushes inside the establishment, along with high pressure, threatening to drown everyone. But this is not the worst of it, as Nora Price, mechanical engineer of Kepler-822, together with two of her co-workers, Paul Abel and Rodrigo Nagenda, reach the escape pod bay. They find out that all the pods have been deployed by Captain Lucian. Despite the few casualties, 22 people of the personnel have already been sent up by Lucian, with him staying behind to show his commitment to the rig. With their hopes being rather slim, the group of four make it to the control room where they find biologist Emily Havisham and engineer Liam Smith. Amidst the tremors that shake the facility's remains, the party realises they don't stand much of a chance sitting idly and waiting for someone to come and rescue them. At the same time, the risk of a meltdown is imminent, leaving the survivors with only a short amount of time to decide what to do. It is at this point that Lucian suggests a near impossible plan, to use their special pressurized suits to walk on the seafloor and reach the Roebuck 641 station. Nora presents the difficulties of this task and admits they may die in the process, yet Lucian argues that they may live. And just as they are ready to face that challenge, a strange transmission containing disturbing sounds comes from the drill site to add to their worries. Survivors suit up, with Emily scared as the perspective of walking out there for the first time and without having a suit of her own. While the others assemble a suit for her, Rodrigo finds a defective helmet and decides to act quickly, something that proves fatal before the team even enters the cargo elevator. Rodrigo's helmet implodes from the dangerously increasing water pressure, killing him instantly. His act is one of self-sacrifice in order for Emily to live. Once inside the cargo elevator, the team begins its descent when a distress call from one of the escape pods reaches them. Lucian decides to stop and investigate in case of any survivors. Smith and Paul suit up and arrive at the failed escape pod, only to find rubble and nothing else. Just as they are about to leave, Paul sees a body entangled, and despite a warning of Lucian, he approaches it. Curious by what he sees, the back of the deceased being liquefied by pressure, a creature suddenly pounces at him, and Smith kills it. The strange creature resembles a snail with tentacles, and is brought back to the elevator for examination. Emily makes the assumption that the creature belongs to a new species living in the deep sea. Her theory is based on the fact that the rig must have drilled into a hydrothermal pocket, hence the temperature rise, where it could sustain this kind of life. As the Kepler station begins to collapse, the elevator drops down quickly to the sea floor. The team emerges and starts to run away moments before the facility explodes. Amidst the chaos and falling debris, they manage to enter the Midway Station access tunnel. After a few minutes of respite, the five survivors change their oxygen tanks and move on to reach the Midway Station through an underwater tunnel. On the way, however, a second creature grabs Paul and begins to drag him underwater. His companions try to rescue him, but the thing crushes through his suit and brutally kills him. The rest of the team flee in terror and eventually reach the Midway Station. Grieving over the loss of yet another friend, the four survivors are gathering up their strength to walk again on the sea floor towards Roebuck Station. Smith's oxygen tank, however, is severely damaged, causing him to inhale toxic fumes. Lucian is disinclined to leave him behind, so he, Nora, and Emily concur to help him to the station. Whilst making their way there, a humanoid creature attacks Smith and drags him into a cave. Lucian, with the help of Nora and Emily, rescue Smith and pull him out. Just as the danger seems to have passed, Lucian is dragged inside the cave, Nora along with him, as the wire that connects their suits pulls her into the depths, their fates unknown to Emily and Smith. 
After a dreadful encounter with a horrible being and passing down through a deep shaft, Nora is saved by Lucian, who sacrifices himself and makes his suit explode under the crushing pressure of the deep sea. Reaching the Shepherd Station alone, Nora changes suits, and after having a few emotional moments of terror and sadness, she tries unsuccessfully to contact Smith and Emily. Feeling that she has been left alone, she walks out again, only to find Emily and Smith are still alive. Emily takes courage from her, and together, the two women carry the barely unconscious Smith all the way to Roebuck Station. Yet, their nightmare is far from over once they arrive at Roebuck. They see a whole nest of eerily humanoid creatures that have haunted them so far, dangling from the ceiling of the tunnel that leads into the station. Afraid as they might be, they have no choice but to creep under them and get inside. They are halfway there when the creatures are alerted to their presence. Nora urges Emily to take Smith inside as she stays behind to buy them time to escape. The strange beings are ready to attack Nora when a sudden wail freezes them still. The ceiling of the tunnel is seen then to disappear from view. Nora attempts to shed some light on the whereabouts of the haunters by firing a flare, only to discover a monster of mythic proportions looming above her like a nightmare taken from a Lovecraftian tale of horror. A cyclopean creature that resembles Cthulhu smashes its hand against the seafloor, causing the explosion that hits Nora unconscious. When she awakes, she is safely inside the Roebuck station with Emily and Smith. As the monster outside slowly destroys the station, the three survivors make it to the escape pod bay. There, Nora discovers that only two of the pods are operational, meaning that one of them would have to stay behind. She does not reveal this information, getting Smith first inside one of the pods and giving him Paul's favourite stuffed animal. Emily finds out now that there is only one escape pod and offers Nora assistance in order to make another operational. Nora refuses and convinces Emily to board the remaining pod and leave while she stays behind alone. When the capsules are away from the station, Nora sees then that the humanoid creatures are after them. A choice is then presented to the remaining survivor. Fix the remaining pod and escape, or stop the evil that has spawned from the depths of the ocean. The choice is clear enough in Nora's head. She says to herself, Stop thinking and start doing. Having embraced her fate, Nora calculates a safe distance for the escape pods and then causes the nuclear core of Roebuck to overheat. A giant explosion levels the station, killing the giant monster and its offspring before getting to the pods, already now on their way back to the surface. <laughs>